Hi everyone, good evening. Um, welcome to another edition of the Gate 7 International Podcast for the fans, by the fans. Uh, my name is Labro Simos. I'm here broadcasting live on YouTube and other platforms from Brussels, Belgium. Just returned back from my holiday in Athens. Not really holiday, I was working, but just got home. And uh, sorry for the delay in going live. We're we're struggling a bit to get organized this evening, but that's okay. Um, and I won't be alone tonight. Don't worry, other people are coming. They're just running a bit late. Um, I I don't think I even have to say further ado. I just began, and here's my friend Costas Lianos. Uh, welcome, welcome, Costa. I was getting uh, worried that I may be alone for a bit longer because it's always a bit weird when you're alone on the show, I think, but good I evening. got you, homie. I got you, homie. You got me. You got me. Just like Diego Martinez has Antonio Cordon. You got me. Um, so yeah, so all is good. I, I went from 41 degrees to 14 degrees today. I think my body was a bit shocked, um, but I, that's all good. So it's good to, to be back. Olympiacos friendlies are beginning. Um, yeah, Norgeland game happened. Costa, you have anything about the the first friendly we've seen, the second friendly we've seen from Olympiacos? I said anything? in the um, I said in the previous uh, episode that I mean I spoke to Gus Poyet, the uh, the, Chel- the, uh, the the Greece manager, almost a Chelsea manager there, the Greece manager. <laughs> And uh, he told me that nobody knows how Chelsea are going to play this coming season. Nobody knows how the starting lineup is going to look this coming season, especially Mauricio Pochettino. And I think the exact same thing goes for Diego Martinez. Uh, I don't think anybody knows how Olympiacos starting lineup will look this coming season, let alone Diego Martinez. Mm. Uh, he's getting... Uh, it's still very early days right now. Very early days. I, I still friendly. don't... Second friendly, but still, I mean, we are... A month away from that uh, first friendly, we need to the, the the signings need to get a little need to hasten a bit. But like I said, there's no chance we're going to see Joao Carvalho in the uh, starting lineup. There's no chance we're going to see mm. Yusuf El Arabi spearheading the attack. I just cannot see that happening. Uh, not according to the media. I, I was listening to the radio, and some of the people based in Austria were saying that Yusuf El Arabi looks back to his prime. And then I saw an article, a headline went that João Carvalho is the star of preseason. He secured his spot in the roster and Diego Martinez likes him. So we'll see. Well, uh, well, we'll the, see the where thing, that goes. One, one of the things I have I, I don't understand is that Olympiacos are adhering to Cordon's method. And one of the important aspects of Antonio Cordon's method is, is, is top is secrecy. No, no leaks to the media. Who knew? Who who knew about? Who published? Who wrote? Who spoke about Kini and Ibora before the deal was pretty much sealed? Nobody really. Which is I think there was did? one reporter in Spain the day before, and that's how it broke. I think no, it was I'm a talking Spanish about when reporter. the deal was sealed. When the deal was sealed, not only Biakos are looking at Kini, not only Biakos are talking with Ibora's agent. I'm talking before the deal was sealed. Yeah. I don't remember anyone, which is good because it shows that Olympiacos are adhering with Cordon's method. Uh, so now every time I, I hear a name, it's, I, I'm struggling to believe it. Like this, um, what's, what's his name? This guy, uh, the Antonio, the, 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 the striker? Could you remind me his name? Rafa Mir? Which one? No, no, Rafa Mir is amazing. The, the other one who's not amazing. Uh, for the, uh, Andre. He's got like two first names, Diego Andre. Marcos Andre, Andre. Marcos Andre. Marcos Andre. Marcos Andre. Yeah. That's the guy. Like, <laughs> I just struggle to believe. I struggle to believe that he's the kind of guy Olympiacos are looking for, considering he scored nine goals in three years. All three of those years he spent as a number two. Definitely, I mean, even if he comes in, he's definitely not a Yusef El Arabi type of guy. Uh, he's not going to be a starter. I have heard of a couple of names, though, uh, myself. Who haven't uh, really hit the um, haven't really yeah. hit the news? I, I'm not sure if I can name the source because I'm, I'm not. I, 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 I don't think I'm allowed to. But uh, we got Sergi Gomez from Espanol that I've heard of, the centre back from Espanol, and Unai Garcia from Osasuna. 
both in their 30s, both center backs. You mentioned this Labro in our WhatsApp meeting, in our WhatsApp groups that he, they're both right footed. Yeah. Uh, not amazing options. Uh, I don't know much about them, but what I know about Gomez is that uh, uh, he was at Espanol who had the worst defense last season. An average right. player. I, I've been talking to Panos Kostopoulos from Marca in Spain, and he he told me he doesn't convince him. Sergio Gomez that is a kind of player that doesn't convince him. He, yeah. he calls him an average player. Unai Garcia mm-hmm. is a better option, Panos Kostopoulos says. Uh, he was pretty good at Osasuna, uh, although he wasn't an undisputed starter, as he put it, sit down. Uh, but then again, Panos tells me he's not too sure what kind of what kind of formation and system uh, he wants to play as um, uh, uh, Diego Martinez wants to play at Olympiacos. But those are the two players I heard about for the centre-back position. That's Sergio Gomez and Unai Garcia. Hmm. No, so it's interesting because the two names you you brought to light were both right footers and all the other central defenders we've heard in the media have been left footed, um, which fits the profile, I guess. They're looking for a left footed center central defender because they don't have one. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I none of the names except Rafa Mir, I guess are so exciting. Like people are not very excited this summer. I know I signed is about to sign the, the Mexican international from what is it? Uh, Inter Miami. Inter Miami. And, and he was the guy they, they got rid of to get Messi. They yeah, had to get rid they, of him because of MLS rules and they, uh, but uh, they, 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 to bring Messi. And there's more, you know, there's uh, Panathinaikos signed the failed wonder kid from Croatia, Jedvaj, and then Vilhena. So I think people are getting a bit yeah, anxious yeah. because uh, Olympiakos is taking its time with the transfers. But and, and to be honest, the first half of the friendly was a bit grim, let's say, was not very good. You know, there were some things you saw, but the football looked bad. You saw players like uh, Rezos being exposed pretty bad. Um, So it it was like a bit of reality shock. I think the second half was a bit better. And in my opinion, it was more, again, I was watching while working in the background. It was more a 4-4-2 type thing. He ran out in the second half. First half was 4-2-3-1. But I think... And, and we said this in one of the last podcasts I was on. I think Cordon and Martinez and the higher staff at Olympiacos have analyzed the roster. They've decided they're going to make two. <laughs> is this a young cat you have? You have a kitten now. It's a now. three-month cat. His name is Lazarus. And uh, I can't control him. Sorry, guys. This, yeah, is, I, how it's, you, this is how the podcast is going to go. This is how it's going to happen tonight. No worries. No worries. But the, uh, the plan was... <laughs> Oh, he's cute. Uh, the The plan is, I, I think, this is not from intel or sources, but I think Martinez Cordon analyzed the squad as is, spoke with upper echelon. The budget was discussed, which was probably Adi has explained to people and I think tried to explain to people there's financial fair play issues when you're not making the Champions League and you're giving boatloads of money away to players who stay for three months and then you break contracts and then you sign big bams and they don't work. So there is some financial stress at the club. Um, If you read through the tea leaves, you can see not stress per se, but there's financial fair play, which you have to abide by. And I do think they looked at the roster and they said, okay, we can, we need a striker. We need a six and we need, I, I think Kini came just a in case back. Oleg Kini. goes, and we need a center back. So I think they're going for a striker. They look for the center back, and I wouldn't be surprised if the age profile again is 33 year old Spaniard who we haven't heard the name of signs for Olympiacos on a free, because I do think, I don't think this is when they're signing the young players who are going to be, you know, the big names coming into this Olympiacos team. I think we've got to wait for those transfers. The transfers that are coming now are going to be the 35-year-old Ibora, a 33-year-old Spanish left-footed center back who Cordon knows. Like, I think of Raul Abiel, but he's right-footed, I think. 
you know, something like that, like an older Spanish player to come in. And at striker, I think they're going for a Guerrero type, you know. When I look at Marcos Andre, I, I see a player that's strong, fit, runs, maybe doesn't score any goals whatsoever. But I think, unlike El Arabi, he's going to be quite active. And maybe that's the profile they want to to support El Arabi. And then they'll get a third striker in late August. Anyway, that... I, I think there's logic when you watch what's happening. It's frustrating for a lot of people, but it's quite logical if you look at it. You know, if you look at the situation, you analyze it. I think their actions make sense. I think they're frustrating for a lot of people because they saw how bad Olympiacos was. They want signings. They want people out. They want people in. But I honestly think they looked at the roster, they analyzed it, and they said, okay, with these 22 plus four more who we know well, we can make it to the to the group stage of the Europa League and then we we can kick it off and go after sign-ins. So I do think they look at this like a long-term project as well, Costa. Maybe you agree with that or disagree. I think they I I think this is bigger than one summer. I think this whole plan of Cordon and Martinez is going to take months and multiple transfer windows to come through. Are they going to be given the time? That's another question. But if you look at how they're moving in the market, it's not someone who just thinks they're going to be around until October, let's say, anyway. So of, course it's, uh, of course it's not a summer rebuild. This is, we've said it here, this is at least a two-year plan Olympiacos are going through. Uh, yeah. It's going to take a while, and the reason why signings are have been delayed is because the manager has been delayed. The manager has been delayed a lot. And Cordon Cordon was delayed as well, a bit. Not as much, like you would expect. Not as much, but a bit. The manager did take a long time. The manager did take a long time. Uh, It's very important that Olympiacos have Cordon because they finally have a real real sporting director with a proven sporting director, the guy that built uh, Villarreal. so, but 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 because Diego Martinez took a long time to bring to, to bring out Olympiacos, this is why it, now, now the signings are taking too long, right now. I'm not too sure Kini has been brought in in case Rabchuk leaves. I think Kini is exactly what they say he is, and that is uh, Rodinez uh, number two, and he is quite a good uh, and he's a very good fullback based on what I've read. Uh, he's especially for number two, and if he can help out on the left. That'd be that. That's even greater. But he's also a locker room. I look at Ibora and Kini, and they're straight players. You know, Cordon knows them, Martinez knows them, and he says, "Okay, show the rest of these guys like kind of what we're, you know, player amongst player. Like he can trust Ibora to explain what he wants on the pitch to some of. It's like his general on the field, you know. Kini as well, well, you know. That's another thing. I, sp- I, I asked Gus Poyet after George Bulldog's performance against Kylian Mbappé, who did really well and was injured, by the way. His ankle was shattered from that Republic of Ireland game, and he still, he still marked Kylian Mbappé so well. In England, people were saying that he, he put him in his pocket. He bullied him, some people said. And I asked him, like, uh, don't you think that all those big seven in the Premier League, now it's big seven, not big six, now with Newcastle, don't you? I mean, we've heard we've heard those players. We've heard from those big seven looking at Joao Cancelo, Tino Livramento, those kind of right backs. And I was thinking, and I asked him, how about how about uh, how about a bargain deal with George Bulldog from Sheffield United? And what he told me is that it's one thing to look at a player's highlights, to look at how a player competed on the pitch, and it's another thing when it comes to personality. And you hit the name. Uh, right, you hit the nail right in the head there, Labros. Ibora and Kini are not just players that are needed on the pitch. They, it's their personality that also counts. That's one of the main reasons Cordon and Martinez brought those two, especially Ibora. Ibora is a proven winner. He's won the Europa League three times or four times. I uh, I forget three, three times with Sevilla, four, four with Villarreal. Three there times was one with Sevilla, Villarreal. one with Villarreal. Yeah. There's a guy who knows about the uh, the top tier. There's a guy who knows about elite football there's a guy who knows what it takes to win and i i hear that he does have leadership skills 
Uh, the age, yeah, it's not great. But Cordon, to be honest with you, Cordon did provide us with a little spoiler that the best signings happen in August. So we could no, pretty much... What, exp- what he's trying to do is he's trying to stabilize the squad. He... Olympiacos is good enough to beat Servette, like I promise you. That's Olympiacos. something you say. That's something, that's something you say. I don't know anything about Servette. I don't know anything about Servette. I know most people don't know anything about Servette, but the the squad value, the personalities, whatever, Olympiacos should – this is a team that does not play in Europe ever. Like, I think what was decided was – like I said earlier, we're going to go. We have Fortunis, we have Pepiel, we have maybe Zinkernago, we have El Arabi, we have Huang. These are players that are dreams of clubs like Servette. Like Pepiel would never sign for Servette. Like it's like Zinkernago, too, even, and Zinkernago, you know, like Servette, Servette is one of those teams that is still building something. I don't think they're there yet. So we'll we'll see. Um, so I think the analogy anyone can go on transfer mark and go. Com- I know this is a very poor way of doing it, but just look at the value of Olympiacos, the value of Servette. I think Servette is worth less than 20, 20 million euros. Olympiacos is over one ten. So it shows you the difference. I think Gank is worth almost ten times that of Servette. So if you don't think we're playing Servette, I have news for you. Um, so, yeah, I think they analyzed it and they said, okay, we can at least get through Servette with what we have. We bring Ibora in to stabilize and project our idea and our plan onto the rest of the players. And we bring Kini as cover and also a bit of locker room as well. So it makes sense. In my opinion. In my opinion. Well, all of this I, I don't makes think, sense. I don't, like, I don't they're not glamorous and they're not that. exciting, but they're... They make sense, in my opinion. I feel like there's opinion. going to be more signings. There's going to be, there's definitely going to be more signings before Servette. But like I said, it's because the manager took ages to come. The signings are taking ages, and there's going to be more signings before Servette or Gank. Uh, but or I'm Gank. not too sure they're going to be ready. I just don't see them being ready. I think the, I think the, I think the truth is somewhere in between the middle. But uh, what do the fans think? What does the comment section? Oh, the think? fans. I, I see you guys um, in the comments. Um, Harry said, Yes, yeah, Sasapo. Yes, yeah, Harry. Yes, yeah, Harry. And we can talk. Can we talk about the Linica? My guess. So, if you stay in my Stanley, you stay in the Linica. And uh, chat, like, Patista. Yes, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. It's free. It's free. Like it's Harry free. said, it's also free. Yeah. It's also free. And uh, Chris is not happy in all, all caps. Tell me, metagrafes, argume, poli. Yeah. I'm going to ask you something, Labro. I'm going to ask you. Maristero back, striker, or center and actually, one, I think we're going to, I, I think what we time. really need is one, one center back, one winger, one striker before Servette. That's what Olympiacos needs. Mm. And not Marco Sandre. I think it's fake news. I think Marco Sandre might be fake news. I actually believe it. Could it could be smoke might be screens, news. but I also see the, the profile. Uh, Kalispera, Chris. Uh, good to see you guys. Kalispera, no Chris. What are you <laughs> uh, Nolan asked me if I was playing in the position of Retzos versus I. It was bad. It was bad against Norgeland. I like Retzos as a player. Um, I really, yeah, I loved him so much when he first came through at Olympiacos. Like, yeah. he was one of those players where, like, I had to shed a tear when he left, you know, and you're like, this guy's going to be world class. Do you um, remember when he was given the armband? I think he's the youngest captain in Olympiacos history. Yeah. Yeah, I I was gonna get a Retzos jersey, and then he was sold before I could buy one. I do remember that. He had well. a lot of injuries, loads, yeah. loads of injuries for Retzos. No one asked the or says the good deals at the end of August could be dangerous, con- <laughs> considering they won't have a preseason with the team. That's true. That is also true. Yeah, but like we said, Cordon is not building Olympiacos for this season. He's building Olympiacos for many, many seasons and ahead. Like it's the Villarreal said, project. That we may be on a tight budget this summer as well. We also haven't made the sales yet, guys. We sold uh, Henry Onyekuru, but before, if more signings could come in, if Philip Zinkernago brings a transfer fee, if Matika Oleg Grabchuk, 
and Mari Kamara, there's still a few players that could open us up some space to make some sign. Pierre Koundé la- or is supposedly rumored to leave. He um, was supposed to. Th- thanks, Greek media. Yeah, Mamadou Kane was bought by the Russian he, billionaire of Paphos FC. Paphos, so whatever. that's good. Um, we got 25 Nola- players now in uh, Austria. Olympiacos have 25 yeah, players right so now. So it's normal. And Nolan mentions Babic, who I didn't mention, the 6'4", roughly 192 centimeters uh, central defender. I think, is it Girona he plays for? I'm not sure. From Serbia, played for Red Star as well. Um, GS says Rafa Mir is spoken. And Mir's, yeah, Rafa Mir seems a bit too pricey for us. Um, He's, he, that's a very difficult deal, guys. Rafa Mir... Yeah. Is an extremely difficult. But if he comes to Olympiacos, he is going to absolutely own that league. He is going to own it. So yeah. if Ol- if, if Olympiacos have that money, they they might as well just splash it. And uh, Spiro says we want midfielders as soon as possible. Yeah. And GS says, what about the guys who went on loan last year? Kunde, Kamara, Hasan, Rangelovic. Let's start. Kunde is back, close to being sold. Supposedly Genoa recently promoted to Serie A, is interested. Um, <laughs> uh, AK-47, as we say, is enjoying the beaches in the south of Athens very much. He posts pictures every day. Hassan is injured. Hassan and is injured, uh, yeah. Lazar Angelovic is going to be... He's going to uh, be sold. And I, I think be he didn't, sold make, or he didn't make the squad, did he? He didn't, he didn't even make the squad. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, guys, so uh, that's that. So right now in the squad, we don't have a, a backup striker. That's why this Marcos Andre scenario is a bit desperate. Um, or Marcos Andre, the striker situation is a bit uh, uh, a bit desperate. But I also think El Arabi has looked good in the friendlies. Guys, if you want to drop a comment, what have you thought about El Arabi so far? I, I've, I've thought he's played very well so far bit so of a far, rejuvenation so uh we got a comment from christos who's asking about uh yeah. who's asking about the uh, autographs and selfies in austria i i have no idea personally i really yeah, don't know I but must, i really don't uh, know christos i have no idea but i assume so because it's a very small stadium and it's it's very in the preseason you'll see there's like a hundred people there if you just walk down and it's it's like a school you'd find like uh, Dimotico or something, the public uh, field, you know, where there's the track. You just walk down, you say, in bomb, Philippe Zinkernagel, hi, can, you want to speak? And the players will probably come speak with you. Obviously, so, be nice. Be nice. Yeah. But we and don't everyone know. Everyone is we... commenting about the cat as well. The cat is, uh, the cat's mad. He He wants signings too. <laughs> he can't wait. Yeah, he, he can't. He, he just no, look at him shadow what, what box. Look at him. Look at him. Like look he's three months, and he's he thinks uh, my limbs are are toys. He thinks my limbs are toys. So he constantly Does he get on with and the other cat You have? Does he get uh, well, yeah. well, now I'm a, I, I had to move, so I'm keep I, I'm babysitting him now, uh, and he uh, doesn't okay. get along with the other cat. No, that's one of the uh, reasons okay. why I'm having it. Why I'm having him. There he um, is. He's a little. He's a little sausage, Lazarus. Got it. Cats, 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 cats. Yeah, he's done. He's done. It's late. No, he's he not. Doing? No, he's not. He's not done at all. <laughs> he's not done at all. But when you guys drop in the comments, are are you of the? Are you trusting the process? Or right now, are you worried about the lack of signings? What What do you guys think? Because I I would say the fan base is quite divided. Also, what doesn't help, Costa? Is we're I don't think we're getting any news as well, you know. Like every, if you're an Olympiacos fan, you know where you go for news. Sometimes these days is Sport FM. They post the clips of the reporters telling the news. You go Sport Twenty Four or whatever, or you go uh, Sport Twenty Four does this daytime show now with Padelis Diamantopoulos. Uh, and no one has any news. They also you know? have like correspondence. Every- well, they yeah, I mean, that, that's good. But that's no good. one, but 
but but that's you know good. What I mean? it's it doesn't good, help. Though. It's good, but it doesn't help the fans because everyone is so anxious for signings. Um, I, 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 I mean, crazy. obviously, first this off, is, uh, for, this is my friend from off, high yeah, school, Isaiah, Isaiah Brown. Browning, from Thank Honolulu, you so much, Hawaii. Uh, she's, I, I love it. Thank you, Isaiah, for the five dollars. <laughs> He says, "Love the work you guys, you boys are doing. The best football podcast in town." Isaiah, we'll go for Thank a beer you, and next time I'm home for that. Thank comment. you, Isaiah. It's on me, even though beers but, in Hawaii now are like fucking expensive. But anyway, because everywhere out. there's so, everywhere else they're so cheap. We don't speak about the price in Hawaii <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but um, well. Lazarus's ninja skills, yeah, they could they could kind of help. I think he'd be better than Marcos Andre, based on what I've heard about him. I think okay, Lazarus come on. could. Marcos, did we ask anyone in Spain about Marcos Andre? Yeah, I have. Uh, we, and we, what spoke, have we heard? Uh, I spoke from Panos Kostopoulos about it. Well, basically, Panos told me that uh, he um, he is basically uh, he is been, he he hasn't really set uh, La Liga alight. Uh, yeah. I think he did pretty well in Brazil, was it? Uh, he was he, was, he played for Valencia and Valladolid. Uh, both of them were both of them were de- de- dealt with issues uh, when he was uh, part of that team. Yeah. Uh, nine goals in three seasons. Wasn't a starter. Uh, he uh, Panos tells me he's an average center forward, and he also added that it'd be best if he comes in as a number two. I've said it in the show. Like it'd be best if he came in. As an Ahmed Hassan type of uh, type of striker. I mean, you mentioned it as well because uh, Martinez needs players who know how to press. He needs players who can run. He so needs maybe he a Guerrero. That. You know, like a Guerrero. Guerrero is not going to be your starting striker in the season, right? You remember Guerrero, Guerrero was a donkey. Guerrero was a donkey. No, but Guerrero ran and pressed. And, you know, Martial says this in our group chat all the time, Olympiacos France, that in these qualifiers, sometimes you need the fittest player. The fittest players win. And if Marcos Andre is in good shape and is going to chase after a center back who gets dead tired at the 80th minute and we get a goal like that, that's all the money, Costa. Mm. Like, you're, you don't, you're not paying for the skill of Bakambu, you're paying for a guy who's in shape and in 38 degrees Celsius is still running and pressing players who are getting tired. You know, that's when I see Marcos Andre, I I think that's the role he's going to play. You know, I also think Brownie Day was a bit like that. He was decent in front of goal, let's be real. But like he he played that system where he ran and he ran and he ran and we don't have that right now at striker. Um, well, we we don't have anyone other than El Arabi, of course. But I think, yeah, so so let's see. We're I think we're beating the horse dead with these transfers, and w- there's no news to talk about. So maybe we talk okay. about. Go ahead, Costa. No, I I think we're gonna. I think I think this summer the the theme of the summer is we're gonna be hearing players coming in that we've never heard. Uh, about them being linked with Olympiacos. Yeah. I think those left field signings are going to be the theme of the summer. You're, we're he, we've heard Marcos Andre. We're here, we heard about uh, Rafa Mir. Uh, we've heard some uh, outlandish players like Dusan Tadic, who, who I think he also went to Fener right now. I think he. Fener. That's, the, the, so, that's such a ticking time bomb, that Turkish league with Galatasaray and all of that. Like, how they can make all these signings and pay these guys this money, I don't, I have no idea, but it seems like a ticking time bomb, as they say. Let's see. Guys, be honest, how do you rate the transfers from our opponents, from Christos? Well, to, to be honest with you, like Olympiacos is the kind of team that now needs to really focus on themselves and not worry about what the other teams are really doing. Yeah. Uh, well, to be honest with you, I, I'm covering the Premier League right now, and because when you cover when you cover the Premier League, you've got to cover all 20 teams, and I barely have time for Olympiacos. I haven't really had time to see what Panathinaikos and Nike are doing. But the thing is, we've got to remember this is a completely different season for those two because now they got a summer with European qualifiers going in, right? 
There's, yeah. they're not, this isn't dandy. This isn't a whoop de doo for them now thinking, oh, we got the entire summer to figure this out. It's all good. You know, it's all going to be dandy. They got to figure out what they're going to do in the summer. And I have to say, and I, I'm going to say this, Labro, I think Ike are going to be coming in with a lot less, um, a lot less confidence in Aya Sofia than they did last season because I just can't see them going going uh, going undefeated in Hagia Sofia during the uh, the Champions League Europa League conference qualifiers. Yeah. I think we can see some teams coming in and throwing three goals like it's nothing. Yeah. So if I could come in like, this coming season, having conceded five goals at Hagia Sofia, I don't. I think it's a matter of time until they lose from some some Atromitos slash Asteras Tripolis type of team in Hagia Sofia. Yeah. I'm too early to say. I want to bring up this comment, a donation from Irakor. He says, Pistevete oti sto basket o vazelo sta ine kaliteros apo mastu kronu. Ochi refile. No. I think uh, we all believe in Coach Barzokas and whatever he believes in. We were going to follow him and hope for the best. And thank you so much for your donation, my friend. Um, thank you, Ida. And, and if the other Costa was here, we would open a can of worms and get into basketball because we, it doesn't take a lot with us these days. Um, I will say this about Ike. Um, Levi Garcia is very good. And they're walking a fine rope here about when do, is it time to sell. Because he's a very good player, but you also don't want to hold too long like Olympiacos. So I think I think for Ike, a big question will be, what are they going to do with, with Garcia? Are they going to be able to keep him through this window? What happens to his ego? Is that okay? Blah, 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 blah. But I do like the team they've built. I do think they'll do all right in, in Europe. Panathinaikos, on the other hand, with Velhena, who I did like when he played for Feyenoord back in the Netherlands. This was years ago. We did see him as well for Krasnodar, and I've lost uh, an image of what he looks like. But they're decent signings. Yedvaj also, I have, I don't have a good idea of what he is exactly, but it seems like they're building building a team, you know, and they brought in the the 10 from the Serbian who was playing in Italy, I believe. I don't remember, who played for Olympiacos as well. So they're making signings. It, it, let, let's see with these summer qualifiers with Greek teams, because every year it's like this. They make signings. Everyone thinks blah, 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 blah. And then comes along, you know, the European qualifiers, and we all go home and say, what the hell happened, you know? So we'll see. But I do think Ike is is going somewhere and they're they're the big threat as long as they have the coach they believe in the coach they've made some good signings and yeah i do think vida and muha mukudi are a bit shit i'm gonna be honest mukudi i think is a bit overrated i think vida is aging and relies on his physical attributes a bit too much so i do think they need a big signing at striker to help move them over the top but yeah, we'll see. And Pauk, I don't know. They're a bit timid on the transfer market. They haven't been making a lot of moves, but let's see. Another year with Luchescu, who knows Greece, knows probably the I, best I, summer qualifying as well. In Greek. I feel like I are a bubble. I feel like I are basically a bubble that's going to burst because guy, especially in Greece, people have been talking up I like they're the next big thing. I got news for you guys. This Ike that we saw is not is not better than Bajevic's Ike. They're not better than Fernando Santos's Ike. They cannot be compared with Olbia, with Valverde Olympiacos. Valverde no, Olympiacos no. used to win the used to seal the title on Christmas, not the last day of the season against one of the weakest Panathinaikos, Pauk, and Olympiacos of all time. They needed to take it to the wire. They needed yeah. to take it to the wire with some very questionable refereeing on the way. <laughs> they are not – They, I were a good team, but they are no way the next big thing. Yeah, and but like I, I said, I, I, like I said, Aida Sofia will be – Yes, in Europe, I feel like they're going to be exposed. 
I feel everything, like they're going to become... But there's no hiding for Greek teams. You know, there's all the talk about referees and bullshit in Greece. But the, the, the equalizer of all is Europe. Because the referee bullshit goes out the window. The excuses go out the window. It is your team versus whoever the fuck they throw at you in Europe. And Olympiacos, when they get exposed in Europe, that, that, that says it all. You know, when Ike gets exposed in Europe, that shows you the quality of the team and the reality of the situation. All the other stuff about the referees and the complaining that happened domestically... Europe is like the real thing, you know? It's like you have a good team, you need to do it in Europe. That's the true expose for Greek teams. So, Elias Kosivas is asking uh, what's going on with yeah. Aliga Gitz. Aliga Gitz didn't even make preseason. The preseason. No, strong, he's. So. I think he's. I have to get back to you because I don't even think he's with the squad in Red with the other he's ones. Not. So, he didn't I didn't make preseason, so that means. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, everyone's looking at Tom and Jerry on the right window. I can't even get a good point in about Europe and whatever. Uh, and and, and, and uh, as uh, Aris, uh, Aris agrees with me, I Pau will show their true colors in Europe. And you know what, Aris, I'm going to push it one more. Pau will show true colors, or Lipiakos will tr show true colors, and Aris will show true colors. Well, you know? yeah, that's all of them. They, 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 be but this Europe. is Europe will say like whether Ike is if Ike is for Champions League we're gonna find out soon you know like uh, I they're I think not. they're they're not they're I not. think they're, they're for I think Panathinaikos is for Euro for not for for Conference League I do think Ike is probably for for Europa League and. We'll see, but the problem is if Ike gets Champions League money and can attract some signings with that, we could have some problems. There's no, there's no animal violence going on, guys. I'm the one who's being, <laughs> who's being bitten being and attacked. scratched. I'm the one who's being attacked right now. And I'm trying to keep a uh, yeah. keep, keep a straight face. But, but Ike this... are going to be in Europe anyways, because the, uh, even if they fail in their next two qualifiers, they're going to be in the, in the yeah. group stages of conference. So that's one. I think Olympiacos are going to be in the conference, at least the conference, I believe. Yes, conference uh, at least. The other three, no. The other three are not going to be in Europe. Olympiacos is not a Europa no. League team right now as well. I think it could be a kiss of death if this team goes Europa League, because we may have another shit show. Because this... This team is good enough to maybe get through the qualifiers like Cordon and Martinez want. But Jesus Christ, I don't think this is a team that... Can this? Can the Olympiacos team go and play Nantes or Freiburg or Karabag? this one? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Well, the thing is, the team is not ready. That's The I, team I isn't understand. ready yet. Exactly. I understand all the frustration, guys, but... We have a Olympiacos have a, tech, a sporting director, technical director, whatever the hell he calls himself, who's been there for two months. Uh, the manager bar has been there barely a month, I think. I think I think he's even the closing in on his first month, or he yeah. hasn't even made it to his first. He hasn't month. made a month yet. No, no, no. Yes, I, I don't think the team is was... not ready. It's simply Seems... not ready. And and to be honest with you, and and, I, and we've said it before so many times. I mean, we're honest with the crowd always. Uh, worst case scenario, this is going to be a uh, Pedro Martin's debut type of season, where Olympiacos are going to finish like second, but we're going to see a lot of great things on the pitch. Still, though, uh, you said that's like best we... case scenario or worst. Sorry, sorry, worst case scenario. Sorry, because apologies. for worst. Sorry, Lazarus is I... ready to attack me again. Lazarus is getting ready to attack me, and I'm kind of uh, losing I... my train of for thought. For me, worst is. Uh... When you say worst for Olympiacos, I'm looking at Diego Martinez fired in September and Olympiacos didn't even make the conference league. I know <laughs> someone knocked You want to hear my worst? Someone wanna... knock on wood, but you know... The, the, these you want me to make you knock on you wood? About. You want me to make you knock on wood? If we get eliminated by Servette, I can't go back to Geneva. Don't say No, it. no, no, no. I'm, go I'm going to give you a best... A worst, uh, I'm going to give you a reason to knock on wood. It's Christmas and there's a headline. Antonio Cordon has quit. Oh, God. That is the worst thing that's going to happen to Olympiacos. Yeah, there's no coming back from that. The I, I, I do think the team's image as well is 
struggling to attract some players after last season, but I don't know. Well, yeah, uh, if we could yeah. get a winger with Lazaros's uh, temperament, with Lazaros's speed yeah. and tenacity and uh, an aggression, then yeah, I think we're going to yeah. do great, great things this season. Exactly. We're getting, that's how you get to the Europa League. Yeah, indeed. Uh, they need that. Just like we should have called up our Lazaros from Aris. He was a free agent. We should have taken him for the... Uh, and and Yanis is right. He's this is right. Yeah, what Martins did absolutely. in eighteen nineteen was not easy, but it's also true that Martins came in April before the season and analyzed the full situation. Martinez has been here two three weeks. Can we talk a bit about sporting wise what the team looks like, guys? The current state. Of course, of course. Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I want to talk some more about comments, this. I'm going to open up the can of worms. Shall I do it, guys? This Pep BL and Fortunis is not going to work, man. But at some point, you pick one and you go. And because when you watch the team play against, I think, I think the team we played in the last friendly was a bit better in quality. And you could just see like Pep BL out on the wing was useless. The, the right wing was very poor in that first half for Olympiacos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was very frustrating, very frustrating to watch. And and, and the way they play together and interact, Biel and Fortunis, I just can't see it. I, I, it's the same thing we saw all last season, and um. When, when Fortunis came off at halftime, I thought we saw much better football, much better. And so I, I do wonder, well, what we're, we're stuck in between a rock and a hard place. You know, that's a saying it's like yeah, of course. you you play Fortunis and Biel and you suffer because you have to play them. Biel was a big signing, big name. Fortunis is your captain or you bench one of them or sell one of get rid of one of them and, and you have the hissy fit that will come from the fan base some who like bl some who like fortunis why doesn't bl play why doesn't fortunis play so well i i think that's a big dilemma on your hands and that's not even zinker noggles not even in the picture yet so they do have it a conundrum seem, here it doesn't seem like he will be to be honest now it, it does seem like maybe olympiacos are planning to sell him. When it comes to Biel, Diego Martinez is very big on him. He, uh, yeah. There have been many cases where him, uh, where the two men had private conversations. It's obvious. Yeah. And, and, and Diego Martinez wanted him in Spain. When he coached in Spain, he wanted Pep Biel. Uh, yeah. So he's planning to use him a lot this coming season. So that's one. Uh, Costas Fortuna is going to be the captain. So I think he's going to use both of them. And it seems like Fortuna is going to be the number 10 and he's going to be on the on the right wing, which didn't yeah. do wonders for Olympiacos, although he did pack the goals and the assists last season. It did, I, if I remember correctly, he was the second top scorer behind Bakambu. Yeah, was, yeah top yeah. Scorer, second top scorer behind Bakambu. It did work. In Greece, that does work. But in Europe, that doesn't give you anything extra. I just can't understand that. I was having a conversation with Levoyanis uh, last month when Bakambu was leaving. And by the way, I'm hearing Bakambu is going to Galatasaray now. The whole Al Nasser yeah. thing didn't work out. And he's yeah. going to Galatasaray, by the way. By the way. Here's, a, yeah. here's a bit of something there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Costas was like, oh, God, you know, El Arabi in the qualifiers. And I said, you know what? Pepiel is a false nine. Why can't Olympiacos try that? Why, why can't Pepiel, I guess, you know, instead of signing Marcos Andre, let's throw Biel in this role yeah he did it I, at copenhagen and he but i i guess you, he you need a it. real striker you know like let's say olympiacos in the second leg is losing and needs a goal and el arabi's already been subbed off and your only other striker is yorgos masuras and pepiel you know then you look like shit, right then you're like fuck why didn't i buy a striker so it's a bit of yeah why don't we go with bl but then when the reality hits the fan as we say, uh, you look back differently. I feel like Diego Martinez has started out, out based on Olympiacos' strengths, 
because for years Olympiacos have been playing a 4-2-3-1 with a, with a number 10 from David Fust when did it start it started with Fernando Bellucci up until now Olympiacos have, have always had a number 10 but I feel like but Diego Martinez also likes to play a, a, in a 4-3-3 so in this mm. way he can have Pepe up front with uh, a winger and a striker but he doesn't and have the personnel can, for that. He doesn't have the personnel for four three three. Like it's which is why I'm saying right now he's playing based on Olympiacos' strengths, which is why he's playing with a four two three one. And maybe in a four three three he can have Cosas Fortunis at the back, you know, moving a little forward with Ibora covering the back, having Huang uh, covering the midfield, and uh, Fortunis moving forward to help the striker, whoever that is. I, I like like we said. I mean, Diego Martinez has barely had time. Uh, to impose yeah. his mentality and his philosophy. I'm reading a lot about Oleg Rebchuk right now. Guys, it seems like Oleg Rebchuk is leaving. Kini is in as a as a floater, really, as a number two for Rodine, but could also come in as a, as a left back. But also Ramon. Ramon in January wasn't signed as a as a backup for Rebchuk. He was signed as a as a starter because Rebchuk looked set to leave in January. But if he Let leaves me... now, which is very likely. Ramon could be the starter after that. I don't want I don't want to go back to last season, but look at who's Ramon's agent and it tells you the story. Ramon I don't want to burst the I don't want to go negative. He wasn't Ramon, bad though. Ramon without a preseason, sucks, he wasn't bad. Man, Ramon is tragic. Bad. I'm going there, okay? I, I'm doing it. Ramon is zero. Ramon also is a foreign passport blocking space when you could sign someone else. When I tell you Ramon, oh, Jesus Christ. Ramon should be on his way to Yonikos for a loan. I have, we're going to send Fadiga and all these guys to Pafos and bullshit. What is Ramon, man? Does, can someone in the comment section, one person tell me like, Oh yeah, Ramon. I've enjoyed watching Ramon. Ramon is tragic, man. Like he's strong and runs into people. This man is terrible. He's terrible. Like <laughs> I don't know where they found him. I think it was a two for one with Rodine. Look at the agents. Him. Wink, wink. You didn't hear it from me. But Jesus Christ, man. You're going to take Ramon, who's on a foreign passport, I'm going to go – I'm done. I don't want to be too negative because he seems very nice and he's in all the photos. Ramon is nothing. I, I'm serious, guys. I. Yanni, Yanni, Yanni Spino, I disagree with Labra as well, but guess okay, what? Okay, Let me finish. Ramon. Let me finish. We you, just got the first – We just got the time. first rant of the season and it's happening in preseason. We got the first Labra's rant last. of the season. That was from last season. That was saved. Man, when I watch this guy, Ramon, I literally don't see anything. I, I just... And the, the thing that pisses me off, too, is he's Brazilian, so he takes the foreign spot, which is very precious for champ for European lists and also for in the league. Like, you can have a max amount. So I'm very particular about these things. Football manager-esque. Um so yeah, no, let me not go in further on Ramon. You know, I don't want to insult people who like Ramon. Um, I, yeah, uh, we'll, and, we'll uh, see. Guys, we'll see what they do. Obvious, but obvious, if you if you like what you're seeing, I want to see more rants from Labro. Yes. And I bet we're gonna have more rants because we're gonna be here instigating them. And now I found <laughs> a reason to instigate one, and its name is Ramon. Press the like, smash the like button, and please, yeah. if you haven't already, please subscribe. Share the share the love. Olympiacos, yeah. one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, this is all about the diaspora. This is all about fans all around the world, guys. Yeah. Share the love. We're going to be bringing you all kinds of stats. Ari has done a smashing deep dive on both Kimi and Dibon. If you haven't checked them out, please do. Absolutely amazing work. We're going to be bringing you the top stats via social media and we're going to be bringing you some amazing interviews exclusives with journalists and more important former players guys so now please share the love guys Indeed. absolutely share the love if you want to see more and i bet you i am going to be instigating some massive massive rants out of labros this season
Ramon, guys, I, it's it, it was a sweet spot there, and and the fact they put him on the wing as well, they put him on the wing in this friendly. I was I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, oh my god, it was a look left what Just George Ramon. is saying. Look what Just George is saying. You just do put George it out. Says put it. we should we should make Ramon captain and build a team around him. Yes, George. Yes, George. Can you imagine? Yes. A left Guys, everyone on the comment section, instigate Labro. Everybody on no, the comment no, no, section. No. Talk about that, how Ramon is amazing. Ram Ramon the next Yorgatos. Do it. Do it. No, I, I'm going to pull up Spiro's comment that says Aris is doing great work. Yes, he is. Guys, check out his data analytic drives because maybe there's some data analytics saying how shit Ramon is and it backs me up, but I... <laughs> I, I'm not going to speak more about the guy because I'll be in trouble, as they say. Um, so yeah, guys, where at... where else am I? Oleg Rayabchuk. I I don't think there's even a purpose speaking about Oleg because we know Oleg, we know what he's about, and we also know that he's probably going to leave. Um, Loria apparently with really Loria. Really like um. Some of the other French teams are fake news. We can't say more. Um, Martial has the news on that. Um, that's not public info, but uh, yeah, we can tell you that um, some some scouts have looked at Oleg and they don't enjoy what they've seen in France as well. So let's just say that. Um, what else? What else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about. Biducci, Biducci, Biducci. Biducci. Yes, I want to talk about him because he is such a nice guy, and also he he. Rayabchuk has... is also a nice guy. Rayabchuk's a nice guy, but I also want to say this guy has something. When when you watch him play, oh my god! I, no more. Oh my god, GS, you're amazing. GS, you're incredible. Put, Put it up. up. Get it up. Put it up. I need my logins. Ramon. Ari, I need my logins. Ramon, Ramon is better than Tsimikas. Well done, GS. Well, well done, GS. Yeah. Anyway. Just keep doing it all season. Keep doing that all season, guys. You're gonna I, I want to talk about episodes. Baducci. I want to move away from Ramon because... Anyway, I don't want that enough Ramon. Buducci, I really like as a profile. I think... He, he's a pure winger. You watch him play. Um, I, I I don't know. Guys, drop your opinion of Buducci as well. I think he deserves chances. And I think, to be honest, I think Buducci is the best winger at the club. I know the bar is very low at the moment. Well, there aren't but... any wingers now. There's yes. barely any wingers. In that but what do you course. guys think of Buducci in the comment section? Am I, am I just... We've Terrible barely seen anything of... from him. We haven't seen anything from him. Yeah, we but brought him we in to uh, to fire up to fire up Olympiacos last season on the wings. He and, and he, he wasn't even played. part of the squad. He wasn't even part of the squad. Yeah. And I don't. And I, and I spoke with um, I spoke to journalists covering the, the the Turkish league, and they told me that they didn't see much of him in there. That I mean, he was playing for who was it? The Sport, Antalya Sport. Sport. Konya Sport. Konya Sport. And those kind of teams don't really breed the, the, the elite talent. When it comes to Turkey, you look at Fener, you look at Galata, you look at Besiktas. It wasn't, they didn't see yeah. much of him over there. But I thought he was quite good. I, I Personally, I hope he gets a chance. I hope he starts the next friendly because I also think <coughs> Masuras is a bit... Uh, there's no need to start Masuras and play him 90 minutes in a in a friendly. You know, we know what we've got with Masuras. Um, I, I'd like to see more Buducci. I'd I'd also like to see more Zinkernagel a bit mm -hmm. in the team. I know mm -hmm. he, I, I I know he's another one like Oleg where the stories keep coming, but I don't think I don't think a lot of Clubs are willing to pay what Olympiakos is evaluating of the player. I think Traps on Sport does not have the money to pay for Philip Zinkernagel. And I also don't think Philip would go there. I don't know how open he is to the idea of going. I'm not saying this with, with personal knowledge, but it seems like after a shitty experience in Greece, would he want to go to Turkey after a great year in Belgium? If I was Philip, 
or his agent, I would probably, if I was going to make a move, I was probably going to make a move back to Belgium. I'd move, try to make a move to France, to, to Spain. I would try to go to a lower team in one of the big five leagues or one of the top teams in a Northern European, more stable, let's say, environment after what, what happened here. So we'll Ilya Kosiva, Ilya Kosiva uh, he's yeah. asking, γιατί έχουν κολλήσει μόνο από Ισπανικά που είναι πανάκριβα. Uh, why are Olympia, yeah. Olympiacos focused on Spain? Because uh, Cordon and uh, Martinez, who are working in unison, which is something we haven't seen at Olympiacos for ages, the as a director and a manager together, that's the market they know, and they're building the team based on their philosophy. But I know that Olympiacos are also looking in Argentina, and they're keeping tabs in Russia and Ukraine for, uh, for foreign uh, players p- competing in the Russian and Ukrainian league who can just uh, tear their contracts up. I got a question yeah. for you, uh, Labro. I'm Don't sure me. you've thought about this. How would you, based on what we have slash know right now, how do you think Olympiaco should line up this coming season? So you're asking me formation? Anything you think. Maybe you think 3-4-3. Maybe you have I... a... Something crazy like that. How do you think Olympiacos? Not just formation. I want you to give me players as well. Who plays okay, where? I, th- I, I think it's... Join us on the comment section, guys. You let us know as well. What do you think? I, I don't like the personnel as it is, guys. I Especially moving forward. But I, I also... I It's so funny. Christos just commented this. I was about to say similar. I think this could be the year Tzolakis takes over for Pascal Lakis. And it's not unpopular. It's not an unpopular. It's not unpopular. At all. I, I think 4 2 3 1 is what we're going to see. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm asking you, you don't like the personnel right now. Give me a lineup. And with, when it comes yeah. to a position where we don't have a player right now or a target that we know about, just say sign him. But but the thing when I say I don't like personnel, I also mean I don't like our fits. Like I do not like this BL Fortunis Synchronago fit. Okay, so so tell and me I, how would you have it? I hate to say this, but I yeah okay. Let me say it. So I would go Pascal Lacks in goal to start Rodine signing. Right. On that's uh, I I I. Signing, signing for me. I think you need. Wait a minute. Multiple. So, which positions? At, we, in the got defense, the center defense. Goal, Rodine. And two signings. Okay, two signings in, in cent- at center back. Signing at the left because Oleg, mm-hmm. thanks for the memories. Um, it's in the midfield. Ideally, you don't want Ibora to be your everyday si- player, right? Mm-hmm. At 35, you want someone a bit younger, maybe. So let's say signing slash Ibora in Bomhuang, of course. Mm-hmm. And then on the wing, honestly, I would go B- Buducci at this point. Mm-hmm. At the 10, personally, I would go, I would, I would go with Pepiel with what we have. On the right, we need a signing. At mm-hmm. striker, we need a signing slash al Arabi. So, mm-hmm. um, for me, Costas Fortunis, I just, I, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan anymore, guys. Like, I'm not, like, I used to love the guy, but, and, and I'm, I'm going to give him the preseason because he hasn't had a preseason in so long. But I, I just find that football is moving so far away from these profiles. Um, like is Ravalas, you're amazing. Like is Ravalas, you're like incredible. Says, Ramon plus 10 signs. <laughs> <laughs> also, amazing, this is, amazing. This is another. This is our entire season. This is our entire season. I have an. Mon- this was another opinion I didn't want to open again today, but Manos is doing it for me. He says no. Rodine is not good for Olympiacos. Unpopular opinion. It is. I'm not gonna. Is an, that is an unpopular opinion. Not so it like is an that's an unpopular opinion, opinion. But I do think Rodine is overrated. 
I'm gonna. I disagree. I wholeheartedly disagree. I, I'm gonna tell I, you my. Uh, no, no, you go, go ahead. ahead. Tell, tell go me ahead. about the No, but no, I, no, I, I do think the... uh, I would not be surprised if Keeney plays a lot more than people think. Anyway, go on, question. Well, I mean, uh, here's how I would go. I mean, I, I think I got a four-two-three-one first, in my opinion. Like if Pascalakis slash Joe Likis in goal, I don't care. Let's say Pascal Likis because he had such a great season. Rodinei yeah. on the right, on the left, either Kini or Alsaini. See, I'm trying not to uh, not, not, not to just not Kini to Kini can't you. be your everyday left back. The guy's not even left footed, you know. Just like you need. He is versatile. So okay, signing. Let's say signing. So signing. Pascal Likis in goal. Rodinei on the right, signing on the left. Doi with a big ass signing. I'm talking Melberg slash Semedo type of signing here. <laughs> not happening, baby. Not happening. Let's see. I'm, I'm not giving up at all about it. Just because we're not hearing targets doesn't mean nothing's happening. Huang with Ibora in midfield. Uh, on the wings, I think I would go with two signings on the wings. Fortunis uh, at number 10. Pepiel falls nine. And, okay. and uh, actually, I would put Zinker Nagel on the right in the 4-3-1 and a signing on the left. And 4-3-3... 4-3-3, Pascalakis in goal, Rodinei on the right, signing on the left, Doi with a big-ass signing uh, at centre-back, and then yeah, midfield. But, but I ahead. think Martin, Doi is not considered a centre-back for Martinez. Have you noticed in the friendlies that Doi is playing almost predominantly as a six? Have you noticed he that? He is a midfielder, yeah, but it's a good thing he's trying him now because he wants to see if he can be Boras. Uh, alternative for the season to come, but I think he's going to go as a center back. I think he's going to go and use him as a center back this coming season. Okay. And I think he was also, good. I want to point this back. out. Someone, uh, I saw it. Pari said Labros on serious drugs about Fortunis and Rodine. I do, I want to make this very clear. I do not think Rodine is a bad player, but I think things got a bit hyperbolic with people on Rodine. And I do think he gets exposed defensively quite a bit. So, that is it. I do like him going forward. I think he's a solid option, but I do think sometimes there are issues. Regarding Fortunis, man, I used to love the player, but the knee injuries have done a lot, and the movement isn't the same. Defensively, he's a zero, and he is creative. He's good on a set piece. He's good from a free kick, but I, I look at the, the profile, and sometimes I don't think he can be the leader. And on that note, Costa, tell us why. Oh, God, we're over an captain. hour. We're over tell an us. hour. Now it's going to go ages. I got to work we, tomorrow. We I haven't finished saying my lineup. No, I'm going to say this. Four, three, no, three, you, you Costa. already did one no, lineup. Now, Costa no, with a C. No, no, 4 3 3. 4 3 3, and okay, I'm done. Go. And then I think I'm basically like done. Should I leave Costa, and come back? Yeah, yeah, Fortunis. Because then Costa's going to talk about Fortunis for half an hour. And I, I want to get up tomorrow morning. Marcial's 4 3 3. Pascalakis. Pascal Likis in goal, Rodinei on the right, a signing on the left, Doi with a signing at centre back, midfield, Ibora, Fortuny, Juan, up front, Zinker Nagel on the right, signing on the left, PPL false nine. Costa, talk to us about Fortuny. What, what was this lineup? Was this the lineup for Servet? So basically, we're talking about. No, for the season, for the season. For the season, oh. our lineup, and I talked about how I don't like the personnel at the current moment. And I don't love the dynamic between Pepiel and Fortunis. And I think one has to go. And I think it's going to be Pepiel. But it just doesn't look good. And it won't look good at a top level. And that's and, uh, and Labros went for half an hour talking to us about how he, why he loves Ramon. Okay. I, I, I may have let out a little rant about how shit Ramon is. That and was everybody was taking everyone and was everyone... taking the piss on the comments in the comment yeah, section. But anyway, <laughs> let's not go back. Costa, please bring us forward. Do not talk about Ramon. We've talked about him enough. So I would just say back. that Ramon looked horrific. <laughs> He's so shit. I anyway, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> uh I don't know, man. Like, look, uh, we can't we need a left back if Oleg goes hundred percent um that's that's clear as day like on the <laughs> fortunis bl like costa there's a fucking feel black feline behind you man. yes this has been yes. also a theme of you the haven't day. you haven't been watching the show at all have you i've been i've been wrestling with him all night i just yeah. i just got home man look 
Um, the the BL for Tunis thing was an interesting one because in the first game, in the first friendly game, it was like against Slovacko. It's a relatively low, um, uh, how to, low quality adversary. Even like they're a yeah. Czech team. They got they won the cup. They played Slovakia. Oh no, actually Czech. Yeah, they're Czech. Right. Sorry. They're Czech. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Right. They um, and my point is, we we had a lot of ball possession. Like we had a lot of freedom. Biel could make movements into the center, and he did that a lot against Slovacko. And I thought he looked good in the first game because he was operating in more central areas and Rodine was essentially having the entire right wing to himself. Um, the thing is, when you play against an opponent like we did the other day against Nordseland, against a team that has a, a low average age, they can all run, they're all like super fit, mobile, agile, low center of gravity, high press team, then you can't leave the wings to Rodine entirely. And Biel has to stick to the line. He has to like help on defense. And then we saw exactly what we'd seen all of, like practically all of last season. Whenever Biel played out on the wing, he'd get caught in possession. He can't dribble past the man. He operates better in those central positions. And my point is, like in Europe, you're going to come against teams that play a high intensity level of football, teams that press, teams that can expose you on the counter. And if you don't have a balanced formation, like if you don't have balance on, on the wings as well, in this case, the BL Rodinet partnership is what we're talking about, you're going to get exposed big time in Europe. That's why like I just came in and you guys were talking about Rodinet. We're talking about BL. Because that partnership is a good partnership when you're playing against inferior opposition in Greece when you have the ball for 88 minutes of the game. That's when Rodine Biel can be good because you you got to open up the defence and you're coming up against opponents that can't expose you as much. But in Europe, big question mark there. And uh, I won't be surprised to see Kini start over Rodine in Europe. And I, I I also ask myself the question, like we've been asking ourselves the question for, for months now. Before preseason started, all of us, all of us, I think we said we want to see BL in the in his proper position. Yeah, and yet preseason started, preseason started, we've had two friendlies and he's played both of the games out on the right. So opportunities who's going to play a big part as the new captain. I I don't think, like, for me, the captain thing doesn't give him uh, a place in the starting lineup. Surely they're think... not going to do a Maguire. Surely they're not doing a Harry Maguire there. Mathieu Valbuena is the captain of the club last season. How many games did he start? I, I don't think What's it's that the, big what... of a thing. I, last season I we don't... had a lot of... But I mean, Bukhalaikis, for example, he always started. Bukhalaikis was always started. When he was I, I, like, I like to think anyway that being named captain isn't tantamount to the team being built around him. I don't think. No, it's no, I'm not. I'm not like. saying the team built around him. What I'm saying is, I struggled not to see him. I, I struggle to, to 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 believe he's not going to be in the starting lineup like Harry Maguire wasn't. He came off at half time the other day. I didn't have a. I think he didn't have a good half. Friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, it's true. He. He also, uh, I heard that he abandoned training like with the team and he was training alone for a couple of days um, before the friendly. So I was somewhat surprised to see him start. Um, same for Zinkenagel. He he was training alone. Um, he didn't play, incidentally, the other day. But you see that in that in those positions, there are a lot of, there's a lot of personnel. There's Carvalho, there's Fortunis, there's Zinkenagel, there's Biel. I don't want to say I don't want to quote Highlander and say there can only be one. But well, there's going to be. <laughs> let it be two. Let it be two. I mean, a, look, back, I, I a, a starter I, I and a backup. Know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Philip, um, with Philip Zinkenagel, but I, I really think it's a shame 
if we, um, you know, m maybe, Absolutely. maybe, there, Absolutely. Like there's, there's responsibility on him too, huh? Like, and I can understand him. I can understand him coming back this summer and not really wanting to be there. But you, I, I don't know. Like that's that's in his head. That's for him to sort out. I uh, we're not we're not at uh, we're not in Austria. Um, there are reports saying that he's he's not into it. I haven't mm -hmm. spoken with anyone that's on the ground yet, but we will. Uh, and I'm really curious about that. Like he could play as a right. He could play as a right foot. He is a right forward. That guy. He could play in a four. He could play in a four-two-three-one on the right. He could play four-three-three. He could definitely play on the right. Yeah, I I see him more as a, a Masuras alternative, frankly. Mm. But even that we haven't really seen. Like he played. 15 I think that'd be minutes. an upgrade. And what do you mean alternative? Yeah. A number two, number two to Masuras. You mean? N I no, no, but like if Masuras isn't playing, or, or, or no, what? I don't want to call him up, right? Take his place. I, I, I don't, don't, that's it's what competition. I that's that's a competition between those two. Like because mm. he likes to get in the box. He can play the wing, but he's not really a winger. He likes to operate more centrally, but he can play the wing. So, mm. you know, it, when you saw him at Liège, he was playing either as a, either as a striker. Like when they were playing two up front, or he was playing on the left, mm. and a little bit sometimes as a ten. So, like when you see Olympiakos's formations, it starts off with with two uh, two wingers in a like four two three one, but then you see the formation in game, and sometimes it's it's four four two or three mm. five two. You've had um, like the other day against Norgeland. Bukalagis was coming in and tucking in between Eretos and Bar, and we were playing three at the back, mm -hmm. and you had Rodine and Oleg covering the wings, and you were essentially playing with five in the midfield. The wing backs gone up, Bukalagis dropping deep in between the centre backs, mm -hmm. and yeah. Masuras and Masuras and Arabi playing two up front. That's mm -hmm. what was what was happening against Nordzeland, and I can see Philip doing that. I think he'd be really good at it. But we just haven't seen it, and I don't know if we will. Like, I think if if he doesn't play on Wednesday, I don't see how he stays. It is a huge shame with Zinke Nagli because he really can offer a lot to Olympiakos. He really can. Yeah. yeah. Do you think he's gonna? We're gonna see him in the friendlies to come, or what? What, what are we doing? Doubt it. Do I doubt it. Who? Philip. Philip. Zinke. You think he's gonna play? I doubt it. I doubt it. We'll find out more tomorrow. We play tomorrow? No. No, we play on Wednesday, but we'll talk to some people. Shabbat, is it? Yeah. Is it Shabbat? Yep. Shabbat. And we might see Kini and uh, and Ibora. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. And Costa, I think before it... you joined us, I, I told Labro something that I totally believe in uh, because, um, like I told Labro, like I personally don't know anyone, at least Greek, who knew slash reported about Ibora and Kini before the deal was practically sealed. Even in Spain, like Labros mentioned Spain, and it, even the Spanish mentioned it when it was done. Not Nobody mentioned, oh, Olympiacos are talking to Ibora's agent, or, oh, Olympiacos are, 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 are targeting Kini. I feel like the, the theme of this summer transfer window will be players coming in at, at Olympiacos from left field, players that we never heard getting linked with Olympiacos and suddenly you know this player is coming is landing this it, 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 tomorrow midday to join Olympiacos and fly to Austria I think that's going to be the theme of this tra summer transfer window yeah man I think uh, I mean the first two transfers proved that right like you said nobody nobody saw nobody heard their names well, I think Tom doesn't want leaks and they're adhering to it it seems yeah, but I think I think like I kind of like it to be honest. It, uh, let me try and explain. It's it to me like when something like that ho happens, it shows that there's some kind of there's order, like there's a hierarchy, mm -hmm. and it's being Amen. respected. And the names that are leaked are names essentially of players that have been offered to the club by agents, mm -hmm. is what I think. And then 
that doesn't mean to say like that Marcos Andre is fake news or you know it can it, I think I think we probably do have him on our list he fits the bill in terms of you know what kind of striker um Martinez wants striker that can press is quite fast if anyone's watched some tape on him uh I know like everyone's looking at his goal scoring record Look at Kevin Miralas' scoring record before he joined Olympiacos. I think he scored three goals in two seasons for Saint-Étienne or something. So yes. I'm not saying he's Kevin Miralas 2.0, but like, okay. Um, I think... You got to just think... look at Alan Polito's scoring record and then what he did at Olympiacos as well. <laughs> Don't forget. No, no. He's also now like a legend in the MLS, but please continue. <laughs> I thought the world deserved, deserved to know that fact, but yeah. Alan Pulido, what a player. No one Google Alan Pulido. Costa, you were saying. Uh, about the transfers, I just think, I think it's going to continue like that. I think transfers are going to be announced out of the blue. We've seen mm -hmm. a lot less of Nico Scottis. Sunday night or like yep. you know the the, the post midnight articles he'd put out. Those were like every night last summer. Yeah. It was like the midnight story. It's like every night. The last couple of years, man. The last couple of years. And the info that he had was good. It was good info. Like I remember like the MV last signing, everything like the last couple of years has just been going to him and you you know you're about to go to bed and you're looking at your phone and it's like God just tweeted this. It's like new articles. Oh, what's this? And it was like a ritual for Olympiacos fans. Like everybody wouldn't go to sleep before God just posted a fucking article. But now it's dry. It's dry. Nobody knows anything. And I think that that must be quite difficult to put it nicely for anybody. It's working terrible. In... It's terrible. Yeah, like it's horrible. being a it's being horrible. a Greek sports journalist right now, what like covering Olympiacos. And it's the same every day. Every day they talk two weeks about Maxi Gomez and Mark Bartra, and then two two weeks about uh, Marcus Andre. Uh, now it's going to be one week about Barbic and I don't know what. And then it will be somebody completely different. Let's it's see. The, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think Olympiacos are signing any of those players that you mentioned. Those those players we read in the news, I don't think Olympiacos are going to sign any of them. That's what I mean left field. That's the theme I'm talking about. I don't think they're signing any of those. Can, can I address this comment um, from Manos? So he's basically saying that the starting 11 starts from Huang and normally you need 10 transfers around him. Like, I think, I'm not sure we've discussed this on the show, but I think it has to be said that because of the way that last season turned out, like a shit show in its... <laughs> we, we all know what last season was. We've talked about it on the show. The people that follow us, that, that listen to us, that watch us, they know. No need to go into that again. The but is that there are some good players on this roster. And there are a lot of good players. Yeah. There are good players on this roster. Yeah. And like we've seen it in the first two friendlies. They're they're the kind of opponents that we will play in qualifiers and potentially in conference league. Those are the kind of teams that we're gonna be playing. And we are I'm quite I know it's only friendlies, I know it's early, but I like what we've seen so far from the two mm. friendlies and yes ideally like we all want higher caliber players some people don't like oleg people don't like bar people don't like this that the other everyone has their own opinion but 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 you look at like look at el arabi like we all had him completely written off and marshall raised this many times he needs a proper preseason. Yeah. He needs to come back to preseason fit. And look, 
He scored three goals. He's important the for the Servet game. He's important for the set. Like we all think it's going to be Servet. Servet slash Genk. It's going to be very important for us to get us to the next round. I think things can change. And as still we conference get... was the case. Yeah, exactly. But I think I think a lot of things can change in August. El Arabi included. So we need to be ready for that. But it's mm. clear that for now, we're working with what we have. We're working with what we have. Prosheche. I'm not saying we're going to stay with this squad of players. I'm saying that if this squad of players with two or three additions can't get us past set of vets, we might as well pack up and go home. Because this team has enough to get it's us past. It's going to be a disaster. If we, if we don't, if we don't, I don't even want to think about it. Disaster. Disaster. Much worse than Maccabi last season. Much worse. Way worse. Way like, worse. For the, 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 with Maccabi, the thing is, when you when upsets happen, it's normally because one team is the shittest it's been in a long time, and the other team is peaking. And that's what it was with us and Maccabi last last se last season. We were we were at the bottom, like the end of an era, Martins, and Maccabi was on the rise, like in Europe. I mean. They'd done, done well domestically and they had a team and they thra they thrashed us. They, they, they wiped the floor with us in the second game. Don't want to remember that, but we're building something here. Definitely, absolutely. Yeah. But we'll see. I, I, I do think there's talent, but there's clash. Like there's an overload in that midfield 10 spot. And the club's got to make decisions as well because I think it's it's to the detriment at some point this clash between BL, Fortuny, Synchronagel. Also, João Carvalho, I guess, is now more open to playing deeper. But you know what I mean? Um, there, There is talent, but also it, it's like a mismatch of talent, it feels at time. Like when you, when you watch it, it's just like there's some good players out there and they're just thrown out, you know, and... There's no, like, players like Pep Biel and Fortunis are not supposed to play together almost. Zinkernagel and Fortunis, I don't know. We That's less the point, but that's the one thing I'm concerned about. But it, it'll figure itself out as well. So one thing we can all agree on, though, is Panos Retsos looks like he's in top shape and can take... Uh, are you, are you guys awake? Are you listening? Okay, that was a one, test. One, huh? That was one, a test. Huh? One thing. One thing we can all agree is that Ramon is going to be Olivia Cosa's MVP this coming season. Oh my and goodness. I think that's how we wrap up tonight. You know, that's all we got to say. Why are we going to start with Ramon, <laughs> man? Like, did, did you guys talk about Gordon's comments, like the interview that he gave? No, no, I haven't even read it yet because nothing really came of it, wasn't it? It was just like the same old. No, movie. like he he didn't. You know, everyone was kind of thinking, oh, let's go and talk to Gordon. He's going to tell us if we're going to sign Marcus Andre or when is he going to go on his next trip to Spain. And the guy was like, not cagey, but just kind of really, really nonchalant kind of, I'm not telling you guys anything, <laughs> you know, I'm not telling you guys anything. But he did say like very clearly that, and this is important, Anybody that's played football, anybody that's been in a dressing room, anybody that's playing any kind of team sport, the atmosphere in a dressing room, the camaraderie between you and your mates, like the people that surround you, that's so important. Don't you do you think do you think it's easier for a new player to walk into a dressing room where not, you know, people aren't really talking to each other. There's no positive atmosphere. There's no family environment. Do you think it's easier for a new player to come into that or to a team where there is that togetherness? Because of that's what camaraderie. But, but that's what p people forget like basic things about humans. Because footballers, footballers are humans too. And being part of a club also 
you know, also necessitates like human interaction and togetherness, like family environment. And you've mm. got new coaches, like new coach, new manager with four, I think four people that have come with him on his staff, completely different people who they've never met before, players and staff. Gordon, Navarro, the scout, the head scout, these guys, have, they've never met each other before. So, of course, what Gordon said for me is absolutely logical. It's like, first, you have to build a team. You have to make a family. And then you can bring pieces in and they'll slot right in because the core is there. So even if that core is going to be five, six players out of the ones that are there now, you do the math. Like it's mm -hmm. going to be much better if we be patient. Be patient. Everything you is logical too. Everything makes sense so far, which is what I'm in, on board with. Some people are pissed off about signings and Ibora's old and blah, blah, blah is old, but it all makes sense. Like it all makes sense. It's not like, Ella, Marcelo, I heard you're a free agent. Hop on the play. Like it's everything makes sense sense and that i can live with this is a good one um anna fortuna is a day in a pressari tot in a pexy vasicos diaphoretica up to bago also get you like it in the orima so yeah if fortunis can press then start him if not come off the bench um joe like his looks mature already so Like I, I think Fortunis could well un, could well end up being uh, what he was for it. Martins, what he was third for Martins. Season. Third yeah. season, where like when he's he was the coming reason off we the knocked bench. Eindhoven out because exactly. he came off the bench. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'd I'd be more than okay with that. I'd be more than okay with that. But is yeah, he could himself happen. okay with that? He was okay with Martins. Mm, was he? <laughs> Martins was Martins wasn't okay, I think, with him. No, I, I think both of them hated each other. But I, I, yeah, I actually, think no I, no, I think I'm gonna yeah, I think I'm gonna rescind that. Yeah, I think that his head's in a bit of a different place to what it was a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. Um. I, I'll okay. You can call it bullshit, but since then the guy has become a father twice. That mm -hmm. does that does things to people, uh, in terms of behavior um so you know he's been given the armband so if if that requires him to sit on the bench and become a difference maker coming off the bench then you've got to accept that and we'll we'll see we'll see this season whether that's <coughs> that's going to be his role we all know what he can do in greece we all know what he can do in greece mm -hmm. in europe sorry mate like You're going you're gonna to have to play with three more, like, physical, three cent, like, two central midfielders and a defensive midfielder anchor. And you can come off the bench in the 65th minute and help change the game. That's an important role. That's an important role in a team. But it's obviously Diego Martinez wants Pep Biel. He wants him. The way he talks to him, the way he uses him. It's, and, and what we're hearing from Austria, from all the correspondents going there, Martinez wants him. He he has plans for him if he stays. If he Let's stays. See. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Boy, we're an hour and a half in. It's almost midnight. Shall we call it? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Any last points by anyone? Costa with a C real quick. What do you think about the other teams in Greece this summer? How do you see them? If you want to drop an opinion. Yeah, just simply, I think, you know, Panathinaikos and Ike, they, they haven't sold key players, have they? They've essentially just kept their core and they've brought in some, some good, I mean, decent players, uh, you know, notably Ayek made Pineda permanent. So that's a permanent transfer now. I think that was something that we were all looking at and thinking, oh, you know, they're going to lose Pineda. That's a big piece for them. But 
They've brought him in permanently. I don't know anything about the guy that they're bringing in from the MLS. Um, who else did they get? But they've they've made some yeah. signings, haven't they? But Bineda's the big one. I am forgetting anyone else. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't. Yeah, they're they're looking to sign a defender, I think, as well. Yeah, Panathinaikos has made uh, what Jurisic they signed. They signed Mladenovic, the left back that plays for Serbia. Vilhena. They brought Vilhena in, yeah. So Panathinaikos on paper they brought in some good players. For me, like I mean, a lot of people looked at the Vilhena signing and were like, "Whoa!" Like for Panathinaikos, that's that's a big signing, yeah. Yeah, like for them, where they are now, which okay, they're playing qualifiers. I think it's a good, good, good bit of business for them. Let's see. Um, no, I think, I think they start, they start in a somewhat stronger position than us, to be honest, because they have core, they have their core, and they made some additions. I don't think it's a bad thing that we're coming no. in as like an underdog. I don't have a problem saying that either. Like we have to. We have to build from scratch. When they're dealing with Europe this season, which they didn't did last season. Exactly. That, that too. Yeah. But it's and, interesting. And like I told Labros, Aya Sofia is not going to be... Uh, I, I, struggled to expect, I, I struggled to see Aya Sofia being, uh, being a, a fortress this coming season. I can see t- teams from Europe coming in and, and, sm- and, and spanking Ajax. Coming, yeah. Like the whole we never lose in Aya Sofia, that's going to end... Before the season, before the season Greece begins. Let's see, let's see. I, it's so weird though the um, the era where like big bad Pauk was like who we talked about is over, man. Like no they one sold. talks about Pauk anymore. You know, it's, it's my lucky. You know they, they they've sold. They're going to be selling twelve million euro worth of players. They sold. Um, they sold. What's his name? Ingerson. To Midtjylland yeah. for four and a half million, and they're going to get a, they're they're waiting for a bid for Katarski as well, the keeper for about eight. That's that's twelve million, like twelve and a half million. Yeah, but, Fabrizio yeah. tweeted that they're going after a player, but I didn't look into it as well. But yeah, but it's yeah, no. interesting. Let's see. I I don't know, man. Like like this is really an interesting comment as well from Spiros about the um, about Ajax midfield and. Panathinaikos' midfield because I I don't know like at our midfield in a 4-2-3-1 Huang's one of those midfielders Ibora's the other one but I still see it like not really balanced mm. compared to yeah. the other ones mm. like even even Panathinaikos bringing Zeka back I don't know what shape he's in but generally like yeah, he's been injured. He had a pretty bad injury. Terrible like injury. Terrible. he had a bad injury a year ago. But generally, like he's always been fit. Like he keeps yeah. himself fit when he's on the pitch. He runs. And they've brought in Vilena as well. Um like their midfield runs. Ajax midfield runs. Our midfield, I don't know yet. And the big question mark is Madi Kamara, right? Yeah. And Agibu, I reckon. Agibu too. Yeah, yeah. Agibu could be see. good in the Diego Martinez uh, uh, kind of play, but also Ibora had ruptured ligaments and played an entire season in Segunda División, which is more competitive than the Greek league, by far. Yeah, by far. Okay. Well, that's that's about it. Uh, we'll be back next week, and will we have played two friendlies by then? I think. And smack the like button if you want to see more rants from Labros about Ramon. No, I'm done with Ramon. (laughs) Smack the like button. If we get 100 likes, if we get 100 likes, I am going to keep pushing Labros' buttons about Ramon next season with even even more force than today. 100 likes challenge, guys. Yeah, there you go. 100 likes and you're going to see another Labros rant about Ramon. Yeah, we can do more. And also, we have less friendlies than usual. I feel like last year we had a friendly every day, and now we don't have a that friendly. Was terrible. Like, that was terrible. Now, like, we play uh, on the nineteenth, and then we don't have a friendly for another week. We're only going to play like three games in Austria. 
You realize yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's much better like that, man. Like last year was ridiculous. We played like eight friendly games in Austria last year. <laughs> Not happening. One hundred, one hundred likes, <laughs> ladies and gents. Okay. If you get one hundred likes, we can keep this going. But that's only if. We die in someone's jersey. <laughs> Enough, enough. I'm, I gotta go to bed. I'm gonna dream of Ramon tonight. Goals. <laughs> this is gonna be an awesome season. Ramon number seven. Jesus, imagine if he becomes a starter after Oleg gets sold. I have a new topic of discussion. <laughs> this is our season. It's gonna be an excellent season. Yeah. After, I, I swear, I lose topics of discussion and new ones come, you know. After I Name the kind of sky captain him, please, Mari Nike. Name the kind of sky captain Ramon. <laughs> Ramon, you <laughs> Enough, 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 enough. You Time guys to go to joined. bed. You, guys you, you all need to go to sleep. You're obviously delirious. You all need to go. Uh... Don't remind <laughs> us about the recovery for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Ramon, έλα μας έχει πιάσει τρέλα. Αυτό μας έχει πιάσει. Αυτό μας έχει πιάσει. Your okay, mic group everyone. therapy, Ari Halamati. Your mic group therapy. Okay, everyone. Thank you on that note, watches. thank you, and have a great start to the week as well. And make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and. Ramon everything. included in our anthem. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>